In this tutorial, we are going to investigate the AC response, the small signal response of an op amp through simulation. We will later repeat the same experiment with an actual op amp. We will again use an LF351 op amp. This is from the data sheet by National Semiconductor for the LF351. Gives you a lot of information that we will discuss in class as we talk about real op amps. In addition to the tables, you'll find plenty of figures under typical performance characteristics in any op amp data sheet. Some of these relate to the bias currents that are required, the supply currents that are required to have the op amp operate. A couple of things that we will demonstrate in the next couple of tutorials relate to the small signal and large signal AC response of the op amp. For this, take a look at the voltage swing of the op amp output. You'll notice, for one thing, that the op amp's supply voltage versus output swing tells us that the LF351 is not a full rail-to-rail -rail swing op amp. In fact, for example, for a 10 volt plus and minus supply, which means the total supply voltage drop is 20 volts, the output voltage swing is about 17 volts or so. On the next graph on the right, which compares output voltage swing versus uh, the load resistance, tells a different story. Essentially, to get maximum voltage swing, the load resistance should be on the order of several kilo ohms, four kilo ohms or larger. If you try to drive a very small resistance with the LF351, you will not be able to achieve maximum output voltage swing. This has to do with the current supply capability of the LF351's output stage. That will make more sense in 343 when we actually design an op amp ourselves. Related to this, though not exactly the same, will be the small signal AC response. The slew rate is a concept that we'll return to. Again, it's a large signal response issue. The topics that we will look at today actually are summarized in this figure. The undistorted output voltage swing and the open loop frequency response. We will first start with the open loop frequency response. You'll notice that the DC gain of the LF351 is on the order of 106 dB. That is 200,000 volts per volt at DC. But the 3 dB frequency of the op amp itself is on the order of 20 Hz. From 20 Hz onwards, the op amp has a single pole characteristic. It drops with 20 dB per decade. And the gain bandwidth figure of merit of the LF351 is about 4 MHz. That is, if we were to design an amplifier on any point along this curve, the gain times the 3 dB frequency of that amplifier will be 4 MHz. If you design an amplifier with a gain of 10, its 3 dB bandwidth should be 400 kHz. If you design an amplifier with a gain of 100, its 3 dB bandwidth should be under 40 kHz. The output voltage swing is also related to the frequency that we're using. This is also a large signal response characteristics. If you go to higher frequencies, you will not be able to swing the output as much. An important characteristic that we will run into, especially when you design your active bandpass filters later, the output impedance of the amplifier as a function of frequency. Very low frequencies, the output resistance of the amplifier is going to be very small. According to this graph, if you use this operational amplifier as a unity gain buffer, at 100 Hz, the output resistance is going to be about 30 milliohms. Versus if you use it as an amplifier with a gain of 100 volts per volt, again at 100 Hz, the output resistance is going to be something on the order of 0.5 ohms. Conversely though, if you go higher in frequency, that output resistance starts to increase. In fact, for the voltage gain of 100 volts per volt, at 10 kilohertz, it's about 15 ohms. And by the time you reach 100 kilohertz, that output resistance is going to be about 50 ohms. We will first demonstrate the 3 dB characteristics of the op amp and how the gain bandwidth limit affects the output. For this particular simulation, the power supplies are going to be plus and minus 15 volts, and we will set the gain in the non-inverting configuration using R1 of 2K ohm, and we will step through R2. We will use a load of 100 kilo ohms, and we will look at the gain from V signal to output. 
When I go to analysis and AC and I look at stepping, and you can see in my list that I have chosen 0K, 18K, 198K, and 1998K. Choosing R2K uh, being equal to zero essentially means that this operational amplifier operates as a unity gain buffer. In that case, R1 becomes in parallel with our load, and the overall load resistance is essentially two kilo ohms. All right, so let's hit run. Now we have four amplifier characteristics. One for R2 equals 0K, one for R2 equals 18K, so the gain is 10 volts per volt, one for R2 equals 198K, hundreds volts per volt, and one for R2 equals 1998K, or AV equals 1000 volts per volt. If I check the numbers, 0, 20 dB, 40 dB, 60 dB. I can move my cursor between these figures by pressing down Alt and then clicking on the curve that I want. So I'll choose cursor mode, I'll press on Alt, for example, go through the bottom curve, and I can see my op amp characteristic. Notice the 3 dB frequency, of course, for each particular op amp changes, but once you're past the 3 dB point, the slope, and ultimately the intercept where all these figures intersect, 0 dB, is pretty much the same. So, for example, if I choose the 20 dB curve and try to find my 3 dB frequency there, that will be about 430 kilohertz. If I choose the 40 dB one, then the 3 dB frequency is about 40 kilohertz, which is what we expected. Take 4 megahertz and divide it by 100 and you'll get 40 kilohertz. And if I look at a gain of a thousand volts per volt, I expect the 3 dB frequency to be at about 4 kilohertz, which is what the simulation shows. As an example of the effect of power supplies on the AC response, let's change the power supplies to 5 volts, and then in the op amp model, let's correct these VCC and minus VEE values to plus 5 and minus 5 volts, and the negative voltage swing to minus 3.5, and the positive voltage swing to plus 3.5. Click OK, and now let's run the AC simulation. You'll notice something a little odd. In this case, the R2 equals 0K, that is the unity gain buffer, the R2 equals 18K, that is a 10 volt per volt, and R2 equals 198K, that is 100 volts per volt curves look as they should, but R2 equals 1998K is giving us a rather real result. Instead of being at 60 dB, the gain is showing up at being 27.8 dB. So the power supplies will impact essentially the gain limit that you can achieve from this operational amplifier.